All right, so I'm here with my boy Rinzi Ruiz. What's up, boy? What's going on, street talks? So I just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, to steal Rinzi away from the party and interview him. So, Rinz, tell me uh, what you've been up to the last several months. Well, uh, I've had a lot of time to shoot, uh, so I've been you know coming downtown a lot and shooting and. Uh, spending a lot of time editing my work as well, uh, sitting at, at home, uh, going through tons of photos uh -huh. and just kind of sorting out and processing and things like that. Um, just trying to learn a lot more too. So for those who may not be familiar with your story, so a big life-changing event happened to you several months back. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. The speak up's kind of loud out here. So, you know, I had a day job, just like everybody else, yeah. and worked uh, for the same company for 10 years and last November I was laid off so um, but that was you know it was a really good thing because uh, uh, it allowed me to focus on photography which is kind of what I figured out what kind of my true passion is you know aside from art and graphics and things like that I've always been um, kind of a visual arts type of person mm -hmm. so it kind of made sense uh, transitioning into photography for me. So, and uh, how's your life been so far? Uh, it's been a lot more relaxing uh -huh. uh, and you know definitely coming out to shoot in downtown or I mean anywhere you know wherever I wander around it's, it's been great uh, to be able to focus and, and, and just get out more and really um, work on my craft and, and, and really learn about the cameras that I have and figure out sort of how I want to shoot. So, so tell us um, you know when people look at your work Beautiful black and white, it's always looking for the light. Yeah. So how do you find the light? You know what, I, it's funny, because as soon as I, it kind of clicked in my head, um, you know, because my mom used to always uh, do that to us. Like, you know, she'd have the little point and shoot camera, and she'd uh -huh. be like, hey, you know, here's the sun, yeah. face the sun, uh -huh. that way that the picture came out, right? And then, <laughs> you know, years later, I'm, I'm shooting myself going, you know, well, why are my pictures turning out so bland? And as soon as, like, it was like, oh, well, wait a minute, have people face the light or just at least search for the light look for where the lights coming from uh, really pay attention to that um, my eyes just started to adjust to seeing where the lights coming from and any little pocket any kind of lights bouncing off of buildings I'm, I'm starting to slowly see all of that stuff and I'm trying to capture that uh, in, my, in my images so a lot of your photos are very visual very strong in terms of composition in terms of the design uh, tell us a little bit how about uh, your background has help influence your style? Definitely. Uh, you know, I studied some fine arts and I drew a lot as a kid, painted, um, then got, got into graphic design because, you know, my mom or well, my parents were like, you know, you got to make money and <laughs> painting and drawing. You know, it's, it's hard. It's really hard to make it in there unless you have like, you know, just something uh, within your work that, that can kind of reach out to people. Um, so fast forward, did graphic design. Um, it really helped my eyes and you know just kind of how to see things and, and how to see things visually um, You know I've always been kind of snapshotting things in my mind anyways like you know just seeing things and going oh You know that that looks good this way uh, So I think I mean maybe partially partially it's it's just something that I've been doing all my life mm -hmm. so You know it, 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 it's just a way to transition into photography and, and, and in my work you know, that's the same things that apply to graphic design, to paintings. It applies to a photograph. You know, where, mm -hmm. where the light's coming from, how the how the eye goes around the image, and things like that. So, so recently on your uh, on your blog, you just wrote an article about letting your sit, images sit, letting them marinate uh, yeah. during the editing process. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your editing process? You know, sure. how long do you typically wait before you determine whether a photo is good or not? Um, um, like what? Do you go more by emotion or by, you know, objectivity? How do you rate your own images, and how how fast do you decide before uploading to Flickr or sharing them on the internet? Um, well, right now, a lot of the stuff that I'm posting, except for the recent stuff for the X, the X One. Oh I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of the stuff that I that I've done, a lot of it's from last year. At least the things I'm posting about Flickr right now. Uh, about August now, I'm up to. So I was posting. You know, every month I'll be looking at those photos, really um, kind of analyzing them and, 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 you know, adjusting depending on what they needed, maybe more contrast or uh, more tone or, or, or whatever um, in, in Lightroom, obviously. 
um, until you know I felt like you know my eyes kind of said, well, that that's it. You know, what I mean, it kind of just landed in the perfect place as far as tone goes, about you know, the light, the darkness, um, the subject. You know, if if I if I put it, put it up on my screen and I know the first thing that I see is what I, you know I mean for people to see, then that's great. You know, and then how everything else goes around. So I'll, I'll wait. Um, you know, what six months? You know, for for some of the images that I have. Six months. Yeah. So I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I haven't. You know, I still have. I, I'm letting it sit. Um, I'll, I'll revisit it just to see if I still like it. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's something strong enough, then you know, in Lightroom you can rate things. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll rate it and go back to it later. And then some of it, you know, I want to kind of include as part of a a set or a project. And there's a lot of little things that I've shot along the way that I can put together. Maybe you know, hopefully I've never made a book before, but maybe make a book. Or if there's an exhibit or something like that, then I can I can show it and exhibit. So you recently got a new toy. I did. So what is that new toy you have there? It's the uh, Fujifilm X Pro One, and currently with the 35 millimeter 1.4. And um, um, you used to shoot with the X100 and you upgraded yeah, to this, so yeah. tell us about how how do you like the camera? Do you think it's it's a, it's a substitute for the X100? Do you think yeah. it's um, I, I, it know, fits? I, what are some of the quirks? What are some of the things you like about it? You know, well, you know, everybody's complaint is the, the autofocus, which, I mean, in general, it's it, it works. Um, it's just a little bit slower even, you know, and I, I don't know if, if anybody else has the same experience, but it's even slower right now than the X100. I feel like the X100 is a lot faster. Um, but at the same time, it's, I have the, the 35 on here. The 18 millimeter seems to be a lot quicker than what a lot of people say. And yeah. I, yeah, and I, I shot with the 18 millimeter, and it, it, it's a little snappier. Yeah. But uh, it's it's something that you got to really um, you know take your time and, and, and kind of get to know it. And as far as shooting goes, you know, it's not for like like a machine gun kind of yeah, shooting. Uh -huh. It's really kind of making sure you got the composition, the background. You know, everything kind of falls into place. Yeah. Um, you know, for that. Uh, so I mean that's kind of my style of shooting anyways I kind of wait around or if I'm walking um, you know I, I'll see something in advance and I'll kind of wait and post myself up for that person to come in. So how long do you um, for a lot of your shots how long do you typically wait before you get the shot? Um, so the longest probably I've waited so far is like 45 minutes. Oh man. Place. Hardcore. And, I mean you know and sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll wait in a place and then, you know, if nothing's happening and I feel like, you know, people are starting to notice me or, I mean, even even if I'm just feeling restless because I, I do get restless, I'll yeah. walk around the block and I'll come back or I'll walk to a different area and mm -hmm. then come back. And then there's a new set of people walking around mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes that's, that's provided me the good shot. Sometimes, like, literally I'll wait a minute and the right person came along and I'm like, boom, that's it. You know, maybe take... Uh, a few shots of what's going on there. Um, at least one of those are going to be pretty good, and then I'll try to find a new place to, to post those. So, Rinzi, tell us uh, some projects you're working on, or what do you think is in the near future for Mr. Reese? No, I don't know, man. Like just <laughs> taking it slow, you know, and, and kind of learning as much as I can about photography in general, and with street photography, and kind of you know going through a lot of my work. I'm seeing where. Uh, where I was and then seeing kind of where I'm evolving and, and where my eyes are, are kind of seeing um, you know there's certain projects I guess as far as uh, the collection of things that I've done along the way um, and you know you know we were mentioning my black and white but some of this stuff deals with color um, but with black and white um, there's, a, there's a few things and, and I'm not sure I'm not decided yet what I'm gonna do with them yet but um, it's starting to come together and um, what is what's some advice you like to give aspiring street photographers? I know when you started off, you had a lot of difficulty approaching people, yeah. um, trying to f find out you know what your style was and stuff like that. What is some advice you give to people? Maybe it, you'd give yourself a, a year or two ago. Yeah, um, shoot as much as, as possible. I mean, even when I was working my you know my my, uh, my day job, you know, I'd go on my break times, lunch time, after work. Um, on the weekends, anytime that I could, to, to keep practicing. I mean, really, it's getting to know your camera, 
and going out and and kind of the only way to get over the fear is to is to be out there and then eventually you get a lot more comfortable and and, and you know with people noticing that you're taking a picture and and things like that so it's it's really about just doing it all the time and in and, and a lot of practice you know? so it's a lot about mm -hmm. just practice 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 and last question uh who is one photographer on the internet you recommend people check out um well eric kim <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I become friends with a guy named uh, Frank Jackson. If you guys are familiar with him, uh, you know, he's a really good guy to bounce things off of. We've talked uh, about things. I took a workshop of his mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, and I really loved his black and white work. And, uh, you know, really kind of influenced how I'm, I see black and white. You know I mean? And he had some really good tips in his, in his workshop about that. It was a black and white uh, photography workshop. So mm -hmm. it really kind of helped me um, see things a little better and um, especially with like tone and, and you know exposure and things like that so. and uh, where can people follow you Renz? Uh of course on Flickr hashtag uh, or not hashtag but slash uh, Rinzy Zen uh, street Zen dot tumblr dot com uh, you can find me on Facebook and uh, as well. So. And at Rinzi Zen on Twitter. At Rinzi Zen on Twitter. All right, Rinz. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, Eric. All right. Watch out for this guy. It's coming up. <laughs>